Hello, this is Techman88, and I've got here a gold crafting system for a zombie pigment farm. So this isn't really a very hard device to figure out, but I spent some time just trying to make it nice and compact. So the way you would use it is like this. It's a little bit easier than breaking chests, or maybe a lot easier. So when you turn it on, it's just going to send out a whole bunch of these gold nuggets and push them towards the center. And when enough stacks of these get on here, it's going to uh, just disable the machine until you pick them up. So when you're using this, you would uh, just craft the gold. I'm using an auto hotkey script. And this just makes a lot, lot simpler. So I can craft about one per second. I think I have about 84 droppers up there. And yeah, each of those can do five per second. So it's quite, quite fast. And this is what I use in my survival world, and I just got a request to do this. So yeah, once you're done with that, you can just step away for a second, and it'll automatically stop. And then you can put all this gold in here, and then uh, just refill up part of the inventory with uh, these gold ingots. And then just repeat the process. So in order to drop things quickly, it uses a ton of droppers, and this is also where the storage is going to be for all these gold nuggets. So yeah, just if you didn't know, you can do an arrangement like this, where you power a dropper, and then that powers another dropper, and then that's read by an observer, and then you can just make a chain like this. And that just allows you to have hoppers on the backside. So really maximize the space. It's a pretty dense arrangement. So the way it detects whether to send out more items is with this gold pressure plate, and <clears throat> this is the only pressure plate that does this. Uh, like if you stand on it, I count as one entity, then if I throw out some stacks of gold nuggets, it's going to go up to three, briefly, until I pick them back up. So that's read by a comparator, which uh, is subtracted from this comparator right here. And when you turn it on, this block right here is going to go down. And that means that this comparator can read from this dropper. And it's just going to turn off when the number of stacks of items here gets above, uh, I think it's about 10. So that's a nice, convenient way to fit all that stuff in one small space. So as an alternative to using a hopper, you could use a cake like this, because uh, that puts out a signal strength of 14. And that's just going to allow a couple more items to come down here. So, like, I could put that hopper back just to demonstrate a little bit. Um, yeah, so this isn't going to send out any items at all because it's always at a uh, very low signal strength. Then I can, like, add a stack here, and that's going to allow a couple more stacks to be on this cold pressure plate. Then I can just keep adding more, and, yeah, I can even just go up that high. If I put it to 64, then there is a problem. You would have to put this in subtract mode for it to turn off, like if it's not in subtract mode, it's just going to keep going. It's just something about the way uh, comparators work. But anyway, I would probably just have uh, four stacks in there. It works fine. Or a cake. So when it's activated, it's going to uh, push up this observer, make a little observer clock, uh, five per second. And then there's some observers taking the signal over to this other rail over here. And yeah, these observers read off the rail and the signal gets sent up. So I don't usually do tutorials, but this seems simple enough that I can uh, practice on this machine here. So you want to start out with a slab. This is where you're going to be standing. And then place a block behind it. And then a uh, block down here. And this is where the item pushers are going to be. Just on either side like that. Then what you want to do is make a slam block formation like this. Just uh, like this on both sides. And you want to put some obsidian or glazed terracotta in these two spots so that the uh, that you can have the pushers coming over. Then you want to put uh, a full block there and just kind of like this to get all of the items over. And normally these would be powered. So uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is what it would look like normally. They'd be pushing the items inward. Then what you want to do is uh, take two half slabs out this way. 
they should be half slabs like that, and then two comparators just like that. And this part right here is where the hopper is going to go. And just fill that up with four stacks. You don't have to use gold, of course. And then the block which powers that from behind, that's going to move down from there. So you would just have a sticky piston up here facing down. And that's going to be the on button right here. Then what you're going to do is put a solid block here. And then the uh, sticky piston to move the observer is going to be right there. So it'll look kind of like that. This is one way you can build these is just like that and then push it up. Nice and easy. And then below this, this is going to be where the timer goes. So like that is how you start. Then come down. And you might want to build this part before the upper part. Might be a little bit easier. And this is kind of like this. That redstone dot there. This torch. Uh, there will be a block down here. Some blocks there. and Or redstone there. Then the comparator there. And you probably want it in subtract mode. Might not be fully necessary. And then some redstone around here. So now when I turn this on, it should actually look like it's doing something. And yeah, you can use any timing down here. You can add an extra repeater if you want, but maybe it's better just to have it go fast like that. Then you want to build the rails up here. So uh, this will be seven blocks wide total. You'll just stop uh, where these half slabs are. And these are extended, just so you know. Um, then you want to place some powered rail or activated activator rail on top of that. And then uh, over here, you want three observers. And then same thing on the other side. And if you're wondering how I'm placing blocks so fast, it's masses mod. And actually, I messed up a little bit here. You want the first layer to come out one extra row like that. So rails there. And these will be just like that. So for this part, uh, this is where the building part gets maybe a little bit tricky. Uh, you don't want those. You want observers coming off these rails in this side. And then on this side. And then you want observers going up. Just one layer going up here. And the tricky part of this is building it in survival. So I think the best way to do it is you would stand on here and then you would place like the row like this. And actually, I'm going to fill these with gold nuggets, so I don't have to wait for this to fill. Okay. So yeah, you do... Actually, you'd probably do just one layer the first time. Then hop over to the other side and just do this, this side. So there we go. Then you can do the other side like this. And yeah, you don't want to slip off the back there. But yeah, you want to do this before you do the hoppers because um, the hoppers will block you from stepping off the edge like that and placing it correctly. So yeah, then you just really just repeat the pattern all the way up. And I might just stop at the layer after this. Then what you want to do is just fill it in however you want to do it. Just make sure you have like glazed terracotta for the stuff that's next to the slime. And then probably use glass for the rest of it. So, yeah, just go up this way and then go over the top. And, yeah, I'm only doing two layers of the droppers here. And then just go up the other side. And that should be just about done. I should just be able to turn it on. I'm going to fill in a couple more pieces of glass around here. Just so that less of the items fall everywhere. Yeah, one there, then probably along here. And yeah, there we go. Now I should be able to turn it on. And items will come out, and they should stop once it gets to enough stacks. So who knows how many stacks that is. It says 31 entities, but there's a couple laying around here, and that's just fine. 
so yeah, then you can fill in the rest of it however you want. Clay's terracotta, the yellow stuff works well to, with the gold if you actually want to style it like this. Might look a little bit ugly, but who cares? It's a gold making machine. Should maybe look like gold. Then the hoppers are the last thing you want to do, probably. Uh, just, oops, way too many hoppers there. Um, just put them along back. Nothing hard about this. Face them all in, I would say. It's a lot easier just if you face them all the same direction. And yeah, I'm using Tweakeroo here. It makes it placing these a lot easier. Don't have to lift, uh, hold down shift and jump at the same time to place every single one of them. Just the first one. Then you can just move along. And yeah, just like that. Then at the top, you just want to place hoppers all around. This is a helper hopper over here. Um, and one thing you can do, maybe if you've got a really fast farm, is to split them off into two sides. So this side I'm going to do is slightly differently. I'm just placing that as a helper. Come over and then go up and then over like that. So this, uh, this hopper here, you can put in items a lot faster. Uh, 2x hopper speed. And of course, remove that. Then probably just fill in a bunch of this glass here. The solid blocks right here to keep the uh, nuggets from coming out. And yeah, just about like that should be good. And I would not worry about these items kind of hanging around. Uh, they'll eventually get pushed down. Usually when you use this machine, you would be crafting everything at once. There is one other thing you can add very easily. is just some indicator lights to show the fullness level. So I think this should be, this should do a pretty good job of showing you just the state of, of how many of these are filled. I only have it on one side because doing it on the other you would only, uh, you wouldn't be able to see it except from one side. So I did figure out a way to have an indicator light on both sides. And for this, I use analog logic. So like this hopper here, uh, this is, it's going to fill up this one first, then this one, etc., all the way down. And when it fills this one up, it's going to get to signal strength 15. And this just comes along and gets subtracted a little bit along the way. And then when the first one is all the way on at signal strength 15, it's going to light up this light. So, yeah, those, the top one just uses a more standard arrangement. And the bottom one is for the back and uses the analog logic. So I think this should work. I'm just going to run a tick warp. And uh, I've, got, I've got a command up here that's just filling up this hopper so it always has 64 nuggets. If you want to see the command, it looks like this. So yeah, it's actually filling up quite, pretty fast. So it should fill up all of the bottom ones, then go from the top over. So anyway, I think that's going to do it for this video. I know it's not really a very hard system to develop, but um, I've gotten better at Redstone since I developed the first version and just wanted to redo it with some new knowledge. And uh, sometimes just having a solution ready to build is nicer than trying to design it from scratch. So anyway, thank you for watching. Goodbye.